This is the Music History Today podcast for July 20th. On today's show, Chris Cornell says hello, Joey Ramone takes the lead, the world loses Chester Bennington, and little Stevie walks down E Street. First up, though, on this date in 1940, the first Billboard singles chart premiered. The first number one song on the chart was Tommy Dorsey's I'll Never Smile Again. In 1961, the Beatles signed their first record deal, but not as the Beatles. They were known as the Beat Brothers back at that time. In 1967, the Jimi Hendrix Experience recorded their song Midnight Lamp at Mayfair Recording Studios in New York City with Elvis Presley's and Aretha Franklin's backup singers, The Sweet Inspirations. In 1968, a heavy metal song hit the Billboard Singles Chart for the first time. It was In a Gata De Vida by the group Iron Butterfly. In 1968, same day, actress Jane Asher broke up with Paul McCartney on live television after having caught McCartney in bed with film script writer Francie Schwartz. Bad Paul. Bad, bad Paul. Also in 1968, Judy Garland performed in America for the final time. In 1974, Joey Ramone became the Ramones' lead singer. In 1975, Stephen Van Zandt, good old Little Stevie, joined the E Street Band. In 1978, the OJs celebrated their 20th anniversary with a concert at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles, California. In 1983, Duran Duran performed for Prince, now King Charles, and Princess Diana during a charity concert. In 1984, the movie Never Ending Story with the theme song from La Mall of Kajagoogoo premiered in movie theaters. Also in 1984, the Miss America pageant board asked Vanessa Williams to resign from being Miss America after nude modeling photos of her were published in one of the nude magazines, I believe Penthouse, if memory serves. In 1986, the movie Sid and Nancy premiered. The part of Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols was played by Gary Oldman. Also in 1986, every current and former member of the group Santana performed together to celebrate the group's 20th anniversary. In 2002, singer Mark Cohen married journalist Elizabeth Vargas. In 2012, musician Peter Lagren divorced actress Lena Headey. In 2015, country music singers Miranda Lambert and Blake Shelton were divorced. Also on that same day, the DJ duo 99 Goon Squad was formed. And in 2016, Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa started their tour. In classical music, in 1942, composer Dmitry Shostakovich was on Time Magazine's front cover. Exactly 20 years later, in 1962... Shostakovich finished his 13th symphony, and exactly two years after that, in 1964, he completed his 10th string quartet. In theater, in 1961, the musical Stop the World, I Want to Get Off premiered in London, England, and in 1982, the musical Windy City had its premiere in London, England. In award ceremonies that were held on July 20th in 1965, Frank Sinatra had his handprints immortalized in front of Hollywood's Grauman's Chinese Theater. Albums that were released on July 20th include in 1964 when the Beatles released Something New. In 1970, The Doors released Absolutely Live. In 1972, Jefferson Airplane released Long John Silver. In 1973, Mata Hoopo released Mott and Carlos Santana and Mahavishnu John McLaughlin released Love, Devotion, Surrender. In 1976, Parliament released The Clones of Dr. Funkenstein. In 1979, Ario Speedwagon released Nine Lives. In 1981, The Ramones released Pleasant Dreams and ZZ Top released El Loco. In 1992, Graham Parker released Burning Questions. In 1993, Cypress Hill released Black Sunday. The Rascals released The Very Best of the Rascals. And Bachman Turner Overdrive released the anthology. In 
In 1998, Sparkle Horse released Good Morning Spider. In 1999, Robert Palmer released Rhythm and Blues. In 2000, the Punko Rama Volume 5 collection was released. In 2002, Grand Funk Railroad released The Classic Masters. In 2004, Van Halen released The Best of Both Worlds. In 2005, Fish released a bunch of live fish concerts. They released Live Fish Volume 4298, 4398, 4498, and Live Fish Volume 4598. In 2006, Paul Simon released Recorded as Jerry Landis. In 2007, Jack Bruce released Live in America. And in 2010, Big Head Todd and the Monsters released Rock Steady. Singles that were released in the UK on July 20th include in 1995 when Pink Floyd released a live version of Wish You Were Here. Meanwhile in America, in 1959, Buddy Holly released Peggy Sue Got Married. In 1964, the Beatles did a twofer. They released And I Love Her and If I Fell. In 1965, The Love and Spoonful released Do You Believe in Magic. In 1985, Phil Collins released Ricky Don't Lose My Number. And in 1987, Michael Jackson released I Just Can't Stop Loving You with Saida Garrett. Before we continue, we'd like to tell you about the Music History In-Depth podcast, where we go in-depth on the history of some of the events from the daily version of the Music History Today podcast. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Music Halls of Fame podcast, where we honor a year in music along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with who we think should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we honor a different museum, Walk of Fame, or Hall of Fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the Music History Today podcast. Artists who were born on July 20th include rapper Pop Smoke, Chris Cornell of Soundgarden, whose life we go into on the Music History In-Depth podcast, which is on this network wherever you find your podcasts. The episode is already dropped as you're hearing my voice right now. Please like and subscribe. It helps the algorithm. All right, enough plugging. Guitarist Carlos Santana was also born on July 20th, as was singer Kim Carnes, Brent Wilson of Panic at the Disco, twin DJs Julian Jara and Giovanni Jara of 99 Goon Squad, which we actually spoke about earlier. Singer Zaza Mari, singer Vitamin C, who is now a record executive. Singer Elliot Yamin, Andrew Stockdale of Wolf Mother, Stone Gossard of Pearl Jam, Mick McNeil of Simple Minds, Paul Cook of the Sex Pistols, Johnny Almond of the Johnny Almond Music Machine, singer Marcia Hines, Tony Thorpe of the Rubettes, country music singer T.G. Shepard, John Lodge of the Moody Blues, singer Buddy Knox, singer Sleepy LaBeef, J.J. French of Twisted Sister, Dave Evans of ACDC, jazz trumpet player William Dillard, singer and actress Sally Ann Howes, Merlina DeFranco of the DeFranco family, Radney Foster of Foster and Lloyd, rapper Cool G Rap, Billy Guy of the Coasters, bassist Peter Ind, drummer Adrian Tilbrook of Backdoor, bassist Michael Anthony of Van Halen, Banjo player Jem Finer of the Pogues, bassist Andrew Levy of the Brand New Heavies, singer and dancer Julianne Hogue, DJ Screw, saxophonist Carol Krautgartner, music journalist Joachim Ernst Berendt, clarinetist Teddy Kleindin, and composer Vitold Malazuski. Artists who unfortunately passed away on July 20th include composer Francesco Conti, who passed away in 1732 at the age of 51. The composer of the Beggar's Opera, John C. Papouche, passed away in 1752 at around the age of 85. No one is really sure of his birth date. 
composer Christoph Nitschelmann passed away in 1762 at the age of 44. Composer Francois Hippolyte Bartholomew passed away in 1808 at the age of 66. Composer Joseph Dennis Toch passed away in 1825 at the age of 58. Harpist Antoine Prumier passed away in 1868 at the age of 75. Composer Johann Kittel passed away in 1868 at the age of 62. Composer Yuri Arnold passed away in 1898 at the age of 86. Composer Federico Chucha passed away in 1908 at the age of 62. And that is it for the eights at this point, at least right now. Because in 1936, not eight, composer Arthur Whiting passed away in 1936 at the age of 75. Trombonist and plunger mute pioneer who played with the Duke Ellington Orchestra, Tricky Sam Nanton, passed away from a stroke in 1946 at the age of 42. Singer of Once Upon a Tune, Phil Hanna, passed away in 1957 at the age of 46. Conductor Joseph Kyleberth passed away in 1968 at the age of 60. Singer Roy Hamilton passed away from a stroke in 1969 at the age of 40. Singer Gita Dutt passed away in 1972 at the age of 41. The music producer who co-founded the Record Plant Studios, Gary Kelgren, drowned along with his girlfriend in 1977 at the age of 38. Composer Gail Kubik passed away in 1984 at the age of 69. Composer Earl Robinson passed away in 1991 at the age of 81. Singer Natalia Spiller passed away in 1995 at the age of 85. Composer Dieter Noka passed away in 1998 at the age of 74. Gospel music singer Mabel Scott passed away in 2000 at the age of 85. Film score composer Werner Houtens passed away in 2001 at the age of 77. Pianist James Williams passed away in 2004 at the age of 53. Christian singer and former wife of scandal-ridden preacher Jim Baker of the PTL Club, Tammy Faye Baker, passed away in 2007 at the age of 65 from cancer. Singer and actor Ivor Emanuel passed away from a stroke in 2007 at the age of 79. Guitarist Artie Traum passed away from cancer in 2008 at the age of 65. Singer Rhea Briefies passed away in 2009 at the age of 52. Pianist Mirjana Lewis passed away in 2010 at the age of 74. Country music singer-songwriter Wayne Carson passed away in 2016 at the age of 73. Lincoln Park lead singer Chester Bennington committed suicide in 2017 at the age of 41. We also talk about his life and death also on the Music History In-Depth podcast, which I mentioned earlier. Session drummer Mickey McGee passed away from COVID-19 in 2020 at the age of 72. Singer-songwriter Chuck E. Weiss passed away in 2021 at the age of 76. Composer and actress Francois Arnaud passed away in 2021 at the age of 90. And jazz drummer Jerry Grinelli passed away in 2021 at the age of 80. Next time on the Music History Today podcast, it is July 21st, when in 1989, the beginning of the end of Millie Vanilli happened. Thank you very, very much for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share this podcast. And if you like this podcast and you want more of our podcasts, then I invite you to check out our Music Halls of Fame podcast in either audio or video form. It drops every single Thursday. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you get your podcast from, all under Music History Today. You can also watch the video version of this podcast on either YouTube or Spotify Video, also under Music History Today. 
Our Facebook page is Music History Today. Our website is jamaritaniamedia.com. And our Twitter is twitter.com backslash Music History Day. Thank you very, very much for listening or watching.